What's going on everyone? Train Freak here and today we are going to be working our Rock Island train number 33 and we are going to be setting some cars out to a couple of industries. These will be their very first set outs and then we're also going to build the train or the local to head back to Little Rock. So the first thing we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and grab these two PFE reefer cars on the back end of this cut and we're going to shove them in the runaround track. Now just for information on the front end I am using the horn signals that were used in 1958 since that is the era I am modeling in and the horns are actually automatically programmed on this locomotive so I am not having to press the horn button um, anytime the locomotive moves in the forward direction it will blow twice reverse direction three times and stop signals which would be one time um, we are going to be using my Rock Island Alco RS1 number 742 which is set up for long hood forward. Now the Southern Pacific boxcar here, number 81495, is also going to be dropped off at another industry. However, the locomotive does not need to run around it. So we're just going to shove it up into the ladder almost into track four because there's another car uh, that we will need to grab off of another track Alright, now that we have disconnected that car from this cut, we're going to go ahead and shove this cut back into track 1, which will all be picked up later, as all of these cars will be headed back to Little Rock, which Little Rock is my staging for the Rock Island track. So the next thing that my locomotive is going to do is it is going to go and grab that Southern Pacific car that was dropped off on the ladder. And then it's going to pull the cutter cars out of track number two. There is a car that is in track number two that also needs to go to the exact same industry where this Southern Pacific box car is going. However, that car has to go in first. So if there was not a matter in the order, then we could have just, instead of picking this box car up, we could have just picked up the cut, pull the car, attach the car. But we're having to do an extra move because this industry does require these cars to be in a specific order. All 
I also apologize for the low level lighting on the back end. I am also in the process of getting some more track lighting installed, so hopefully in future videos um, it will not be so dark on the back end of the yard. So here we're pulling out a full cut of cars because luck would have it that the car that we need is the very last car in the cut. Now some of the cars on this track will eventually be picked back up later when we start gathering for the local. But we have to do these switching maneuvers first. So now I'm just shoving the very last car. It is a covered hopper full of bulk unrefined salt. I'm just going to shove it up on the yard ladder. And then we're going to take this cut of cars, put it back on track two, except for that Southern Pacific box car that's right in front of you. Because it's also going to the same industry. And then once our box car clears the turnout, it will continue to go up the ladder, connect to the covered hopper that we dropped off, and it's going to take track four and use it as a track lead. And then we are going to connect our reefer cars on the front end of the locomotive. So our locomotive will actually be doing a uh, shove and pull at the same time. Now I had some comments in the last video on if a locomotive is doing a shove and pull at the same time does that put more strain on the locomotive? And the answer is actually no it doesn't because the locomotive is still pulling or pushing the same amount of weight. Now when a locomotive is pulling, or a group of locomotives is pulling, that very first coupler coming out of the last locomotive and first, you know, car is going to have the most strain on it, unless there's a pusher locomotive somewhere either in the middle of the train or the back end of the train. So doing a shove and pull motion actually will also reduce the strain of the couplers. So now we have just picked up our two reefer cars that we set out on the runaround. And that's because this industry is going to require the locomotive being on the right side of the cars. Where the other industry requires the locomotive being on the left side of the cars. And so now we're going to take the track into the industrial area. And 
and since we are already lined up for the first industry which is fresh and funky produce they are going to be receiving these two uh, PFE cars that have produce in them And of course I do not have any of the buildings, backdrop, of course you can tell there's no scenery yet, but eventually one of these days we will get there. But we're basically going to stop it on this track and just act like a building is there. And then now our locomotive is going to take the last two cars and shove them to Morton Salt. So as I said before, the uh, cotton belt uh, covered hopper should have bulk salt in it, and that's unrefined. And the Southern Pacific boxcar has some crates or boxes that the um, packaged salt will go into. Now until I have my building in place I do not have the track going under my Morton Salt Tower because I do not know exactly where that's going to go so just for the time being we're going to leave these two cars connected together um, at the end of the track because the track is not going under the elevator as of this video. Alright, so now we have done our set outs to our two industries. The industry in the middle um, obviously did not have any cars coming to it right now so maybe in a future video we'll have a car going to it so now our locomotive is going to head back to the yard to start building its train now its caboose is already located on the very back end of track 4 And, of course, that's going to be the last car on the train. So we do not want to pick that car up right now because that would be kind of pointless. So he's going to go ahead and pull in just far enough on track 4 to clear the switch to go back down the ladder. And once he does, then he's going to go ahead and start building his train from track Three. Track 3 currently has three cars on it, but we only need one. Uh, track 2 has six cars on it, and we only need three of those. And then Track 1 has seven cars on it, and we're going to take all seven. So track one will be easy to do. All right, so our locomotive's coming back down the ladder. He's gonna throw the switch behind him.
Okay, so in this instance, the locomotive stopped um, before it coupled onto the cars. And that is so that way the train crew could inspect to make sure none of the cars were already derailed. If a train crew connects to a car and then sees that one of the cars is derailed, then it's their fault. If they do not couple to it, and they see that a car is derailed, then it's the previous crew's fault. Unless some type of natural disaster came through. Alright, so now we're picking up a boxcar with grain in it. And we're just going to shove that into, um, probably on the switch to that goes to track four, just to get it out of the way, because we need to put these other two cars back. Now, of course, all of these cars that we're putting back came from the previous train, train number 34. So as far as like train numbering schemes, and I did do some research to figure out which trains did run through the area. Uh, train number 33 is a westbound train and train number 34 is a eastbound train. So even though you could have the same crew operating what we call a single turn, you know, from a local, um, the train's going to have two different numbers or two different names. Because once it makes that turn back, then it ends up being a different train. Alright, so now we are going to connect to track number two, or the cut of cars in track number two. And luckily enough, the very first car in the cut is a car that we are going to be picking up. Uh, this is car NWX520, and it is a reefer car, and it is empty. It is a leasing car for the Missouri and Arkansas Railway. So we're just gonna pull up just long enough to clear the switch with this one single car and we're gonna shove it into the boxcar of grain that we just pulled from track three. Now we still have two more cars to pull from track two. However, those cars are on the opposite end of the cut.
All right, so the two cars that we're going to be pulling off of this cut, we have a Rock Island box car, and it's a silver one that is um, empty. It was used for express service, but no longer used for express services. And then we also have another cotton belt box car that has green in it. And these are going to be the very last two cars of the cut. And then the first three cars that you see right now will go back to track number two. And what I'm going ahead and doing right now is, as I'm shoving these cars in there, I went ahead and coupled on to the caboose. Because the, uh, the amount of cars that are in there is already long enough. Alright, so now we're pulling our cut of cars back. We're going to clear the switch. And then we're going to go ahead and shove those cars back in the track where it belongs. And we are getting very close to wrapping up this uh, yard job. Alright, so as I said before, we have seven cars in interchange, track number one. We have a couple of Cotton Belt empty box cars. We have a Missouri Pacific empty box car. We have a car from Wilson Car Lines. That's a reefer car that's got some dressed meats. That will be headed back to Little Rock. We have a Rock Island gondola that's empty. And we also have a couple of Rock Island box cars that are empty. So we have a lot of empties that are headed back. Alright, so this cut's just going to go past the switch, and then it's going to back into the rest of the train that we assembled on track 4.
Alright, so now our train is fully assembled. It's going to go ahead and start going back out on the main line. And it has to maintain a restricted yard speed until it clears that turnout that the locomotive is going on now. Um, and then it would be able to increase its speed. Our train is consisted of 12 cars, roughly 584 scale feet long, and roughly 618 tons. So I hope you enjoyed this little operation session, and there will be more to come. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, fill in the bell, and hit that thumbs up. That always helps. Um, my channel and if you want to become an extended supporter feel free to check out my channel memberships y'all have a great one and happy railroading